Chairman, welcome to the meeting. Could we stand for the national anthem, please? Almighty God, giver of all good things, look with favor upon all of us gathered here this evening. Shower us with your blessings of peace, love, and fellowship as we engage in this consultation with the people of Rio Claro and environs for the betterment of the lives of the people of Trinidad and Tobago through constitutional reform. And at the end of these proceedings, take each of us safely back to our homes and our families. Amen. Please be seated. Constitutional reform is a topic that has been around for quite some time. The last attempt at meaningful con uh, constitutional reform in the form of the implementation of a committee's recommendation was in 1976 when the then government implement, implemented some of the recommendations of the Wooden Commission. Since then, things have changed quite a lot in Trinidad and Tobago. We've had uh, social media coming into prominence. All sorts of things have happened since then. The world has progressed rapidly. Countries have progressed more than us to some extent, we need to catch up. Everything that is in the Constitution touches your, our lives in one form or fashion. It is in this regard we are attempting to hear, not we are attempting, we invite you to share your thoughts, your opinions with us as to what you see wrong with the Constitution and how would you like it to be changed? What are your suggestion, suggestions for change? Um, it, is, it is that which we, we want to hear from you. We've had very good, excellent responses to our, uh, our website. People are sending in written submissions. We've had a questionnaire out now recently, and we've been having very good responses. But we want to hear from, from the public orally, and these town halls, we're having 14 in Trinidad, two in Tobago, is to reach the grassroots, as it were, and to hear their views, what it is they would like to see in the Constitution, what is wrong, what, how, how, what changes they require. So without going into any further detail, I will ask Dr. Farrell, and he may be joined with Mr. Rodda, I think, to give us an overview on the exercise we are about. Well, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, 
So one of the things that we've been saying uh, in these meetings is that uh, this, is, this is the fifth time that Trinidad and Tobago has engaged in a constitutional reform exercise since the 1976 constitution. That is the constitution that we now have. So that constitution is almost 50 years old. And since that constitution was put in place in 1976, after the Wooding Commission, uh, we have had the Hayatali Commission, which was in 1988 under the NAR administration. We also had uh, some significant changes to certain laws which impact the Constitution, the Freedom of Information Act, the Judicial Review Act, the Integrity and Public Life Act, under the Pandey administration. Uh, we've had some initiatives by, an initiative by business people, interestingly, uh, the Principles of Fairness Committee in 2006, and they proposed a constitution for Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, that was around the time, that was during the Manning administration, the second Manning administration. Uh, and then following that, uh, Manning, Prime Minister Manning himself initiated another draft of the Constitution, which was drafted by Ellis Clark. That's what we call that the, the Ellis Clark draft in 2009. And then under the UNC administration, we had the Ramada Committee in 2013, which uh, engaged in an exercise very similar to this uh, and came up with some um, proposed amendment to the Constitution in 2015. So this is the fifth time that Trinidad and Tobago has been engaged in this exercise. And I, 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 my, my, my point <laughs> that I make to people is that your, your, your skepticism about these exercises is perfectly understandable. But I think that the fact that we've had these initiatives, plus we've had some initiatives by private individuals, by private organizations, uh, there's the Constitution Reform Forum, the CRF, which over the course of many, many years, in the early 2000s, promoted the whole question of constitution reform. And it says to us that there is a need for constitutional reform. That the reason why these initiatives have taken place, it is because there is a need. The constitution that we have now is not working all that well. Because what the constitution does is that it sets up certain institutions in your society, key institutions. Of course, the parliament, it sets up the, 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 the executive, the, the prime minister, and the cabinet. It sets up the judiciary. It sets up a number of independent institutions, such as the ombudsman, the service commissions, and so on. But if you look at what has happened in Trinidad and Tobago over the course of the last 50 years, it's very clear that many of our institutions are simply not working well. They're not working as they are intended. And while we may think that the problems have to do with the people who are running these institutions, it is more likely the case that the problem is with the institutions themselves. The institutions which were designed, which were really colonial institutions, because one of the things I, 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 it's important to point out is that the 1976 Constitution did not make any real significant changes compared to the 1962 Independence Constitution. What we did is that we removed the Governor General and we instituted a President of the Republic. And we made some other changes. We took away some powers from the Prime Minister and we gave some of those powers to the President. But basically, the, the Constitution that we are operating with in Trinidad and Tobago today is a constitution that the British basically hurried up and gave to us in 1962. The institutions which we have, like the service commissions, like the way the judiciary functions, like the way the prime minister and the cabinet functions, all those things are really colonial institutions. And they're not working well for us. And we see some of the issues and some of the that we are having in the country and therefore, it seems to me that the fact that we have had all of these attempts, including this one, to attempt constitutional reform suggests that there is a real need for change. 
And that if we, if we don't get it right on this occasion, if we don't make it happen on this occasion, and it is, it is for the people of Iran to be able to make it happen, if we don't get it right on this happen, then quite frankly, we will have nobody to blame but ourselves when things don't go as they should. And we've had events in the history of this country since independence which have not been particularly good. We have had the Black Power Revolution, we've had the 1970 Regiment Unity, we've had uh, the 1990 attempted coup, which was a very significant event in this country. And, and, and many of these things, the social unrest that we've had and so on, the escalating crime levels that we are seeing across the country are indicative of a set of institutions, a set of structures that are just not working well. And they need change. And the change has to come from the people of Trinidad and Tobago saying to our representatives in Parliament, saying to our politicians, it is time to change. And so this exercise that we are engaged on as a committee instituted by this government uh, is that we, have, we are taking all of the work that was done by the previous commissions and committees, starting with Wooding, because as the chairman pointed out, many of the recommendations that were made by the Wooding Commission were not implemented by the Eric Williams government in 1976. He simply set them aside, including recommendations for proportional representation and so on. And so we're taking that, we're taking the Higher Tally Commission report, we're taking the Principles of Fairness draft constitution, we're taking the Ellis Cloud draft, we're taking the Ramada Committee uh, recommendations. And then we have gone out to the population of Trinidad and Tobago, and we're using modern technology. We are using, so people are responding to us via email. To date, we have received over 280 email submissions coming into us. We are engaging with a number of experts, people who are constitutional lawyers, uh, people who are um, senior public servants, retired, and so on, to come and talk to us about some of the kinds of changes. And then we are engaged in this process of the town hall meetings where we come to you in your communities and we want to hear from you what are some of the things that concern you, some of the kinds of recommendations that you would like to see. So our job is really quite simple. It is, it is, it is really to listen. Um, this is as much talking as you're going to get from us uh, during, during this evening. It is to hear from you this evening. For us, it doesn't matter whether we have two people, or 20 people, or 200 people. We are here to, to get your voice, to capture your voice, to capture your thoughts, to capture your recommendations, and to make ourselves available to you for that purpose. So with that, I will just turn it over to our moderator, um, Professor Hamid Ghani. Um, I just want to point out that Professor Ghani, um, I don't know what he did in his lives, but he has been involved in every single one of these reform initiatives, except Wooding, he was perhaps too young at the time, but he was involved with the Hyatt Alley Commission, the Principles of Fairness Commission, the Ellis Clark Draft, and the, and, the, and the Ramada Committee Draft, and he's involved with us in this exercise as the moderator for some of these proceedings. So I'm gonna turn it over now to uh, Professor Ghani, who will uh, invite you to make your contributions. Thank you very much, Dr. Farrell, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, <clears throat> my pleasure to be uh, here with you this evening. Uh, I want to welcome uh, everyone here this evening to the public consultations of the National Advisory Committee on Constitutional Reform. My name is Hamid Ghani, and I shall be moderating some of these public consultations being hosted by the NACCR. Uh, before we begin, I would like to offer some guidelines for how we shall proceed. Uh, individuals who are coming forward to offer their recommendations for constitutional reform will have up to five minutes to present their proposals. Participants are asked to be respectful of all views expressed here and all persons in attendance here. Uh, if there is available time, anyone who spoke earlier this evening may come back if they would like to express a supplemental proposal for constitutional reform. 
The session is being recorded to facilitate the Secretariat to compile all of the proposals advanced here tonight. I would ask that you give your name and your general area of residence so that your points of view can be properly assigned to you. Uh, I look forward to having a successful engagement this evening. And before I invite persons to catch my eye to come forward uh, to make your proposal, I'd just like to introduce members of the head table, starting on my extreme left. Mr. Nizam Mohammed, a former Speaker of the House of Representatives and a former parliamentarian. Next to him, uh, Ms. Jackie Sampson Miguel, a former clerk of the House of Representatives of Trinidad and Tobago. Next to her, Mr. Ray Sandy, uh, who is uh, from Tobago and is also involved with the Regulated Industries Commission. And on my left is Mr. Winston Rudder, Chair of the Public Service Commission. On my right is Dr. Terence Farrell, uh, who has been involved in a number of activities, Economic Advisory Board, and a number of other national initiatives. And to my extreme right is Mr. Barendra Sinanan, a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, who is the Chair of the National Advisory Committee on Constitutional Reform. Uh, at this point, I'd like to invite uh, persons to come forward and express their point of view. There is a microphone in the middle of the center aisle here. So please fe feel free to uh, come forward if you wish to express a view, and uh, we'd be very happy to hear from you. So the floor is now open. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Members of the board at the head table and everybody else present. My name is Winston Gypsy Peters. And I am indeed from Miaro, Rio Claro, Guayaguayari, and Moruga. I could even say I'm from Shogonas because I live there as well. Long and short of it is I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. But my interest here is simple. And I don't need really five minutes to say it. Because I've been saying this for a long, long time. First of all, I am wishing this committee well. And I hope that this time around, all that we have put together would work and redound to the benefit of the people of Trinidad and Tobago because really we are commission weary in this country in terms of having all these commissions and whether it be electoral or whatever it is. We get nothing out of none of them. So I wish you luck as well as I'm wishing us luck. But what I would really like to see, I would like to see just about three things really. I would like to see a statutory date for elections in Trinidad and Tobago. Meaning that we know it's five years, so on the, on the 10th or the 1st of whatever, of December, January, February, March, of the end of that five years, we must have elections. And when I say election, I mean whether it is general or whether it is House of Assembly elections or whether it is in fact the local elections, because we are tired. This local election, I remember one time, it didn't have none for about nine or ten years. And next time somebody come up and say they just, we have in local election and they just have it willy nilly. And the people at Trinidad and Tobago just have to go along with it. So I do not believe that that is the way that we should go forward. I believe that we should have some dates. When we're going to have election. I know when, I know when it's election in America for the next 20 years. I could tell you exactly when it's election. 20 years from now, I could tell you exactly what day is going to be and when it's going to be. In Trinidad and Tobago, when election is due, then we have a next 30 days or, a next, or some prime minister could just say, no, well, we don't want to have it now, so 30 days from the, from the due date, we can have it. I would like to see us do something about that. And I hope that 
this commission could take these statutory dates forward so indeed we can do something that would make us more look like a first world country than continue to look third world all the time with these set of willy-nilly things that we do in the country. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Peters. Pleasant evening to Mr. Sinanon and the members of the head table. Um, local government representative from my own north, Mr. Ryan Stewart, Mr. Peters, and every other one here this evening. Pleasant evening. So, my name is Raymond Kosier, and I'm the chairman of the Mayoru Rio Clara Regional Corporation. And I'm here this evening because I, I, I see this exercise as an extremely important exercise. And um, reading the flyer, the first paragraph that says, the Constitution is the law that states how Trinidad and Tobago is to be governed. Uh, it identified the branches of government and the limits of their powers. It also safeguards our individual rights and freedom and protects our democracy. That is, to me, a very powerful and, and the, most, the most important uh, 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 aspect of, of, of the rule of our nation, and, and it, it requires uh, the concern of every citizen. So, um, it turned out here uh, is not what we would like it to be, but, um, but we have, you have the, the, the chairman exercise, um, expressed that we, we are getting a lot of uh, feedback from via the inter um, internet and um, emails and other, 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 uh, other forms of information. So which is, it's, it shows that people are still responding, even though they're not showing up in the house, people are responding, which is great. But expressing the importance of this exercise, um, and understanding the fact that there has been so many different ones. To me, the exercise is not one that should be rushed. I don't know the mandate of the, of the committee. I don't know what's the time span for wrapping up of the exercise and the presentation of the, of the document of all the facts that they would put together. I don't know how long that they would take with that and how long this exercise would take. But to me, uh, based on the experience of all the different uh, commissions that an exercise that, 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 that has been engaged in before, and today, the constitu Constitution is still is not working, says something is wrong about the whole exercise. What that is, is that the committee, that is an exercise that the committee should be engaging in, in analyzing what has not been done correctly, what are the facts or the pieces that is missing in, in getting this thing right, and because we don't want it to be an ex exercise that five years from now or ten years from now, we come in to say the same thing again. So, the exercise should not be rushed. And, um, and we, we should be engaging in exercises that we are, are, are really mobilizing and encouraging people to be part of the exercise. Also, a lot of people in this country don't know the Constitution. A lot of people, uh, a lot of citizens in this country 
don't know the Constitution. They might know one or two things about the Constitution. So, so there should also be an exercise in engaging different groups, different bodies in the, in the country, in sharing information on what the Constitution has. And engage exercises that will um, get them to understand what the Constitution is, will know what the Constitution is, and then give feedback on what, uh, uh, what they think it should be. So those are not exercises that could be rushed. Uh, so um, I had that same point that Mr. Peter shared on fixed dates for election, general, local, House of Assembly. I had that same, that same point. So great minds think alike. Um, so that's one of the concerns. Uh, one of my, my concerns. Also, um, my, some other concerns that, uh, uh, that I have is um, uh, uh, President and Prime Minister. Do we need both in Trinidad and Tobago? All right. Um, so we had change. It was governor, and we changed from governor to president. Um, basically, it was just, to me, cosmetic. Just change a name. No real meaningful change was made. Um, so do we need, do we really need a president and a prime minister? Or do we need a president alone or a prime minister alone? This is, that is a concern that, that I have. Um, uh, the justice system in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, what, is, what, is, what is hindering the justice system in Trinidad and Tobago? Is the justice system in Trinidad and Tobago contributing to the whole crime escalation in the country? Uh, people are languishing in jail, waiting on, 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 on proper uh, uh, opportunity for the case to be held. All these are situations that, uh, that is affecting our citizens. We have uh, in, uh, in our parliament, um, at present, we have uh, an opposition with 19 seats, 19 MPs, government 21. But the same opposition have six senators, while the government have nine independent senators. Is that the correct thing to be happening? And we have a situation where uh, we, you, you wonder if the independent senators is really independent. The process to choose independent senators, should that come, the process of how that should come, that should be looked into because people, you know, it's something must not only, uh, must not only, uh, uh, you see, it, it must not only appear, it, it, it must not only be real, but it must also appear to be real. So, that is another situation that I think uh, should be addressed. We, local government reform. We're talking local government reform. That is part of the constitution. Uh, a lot of talk, a lot of talk about local government reform. And so far, all that was put in place is the change of the of the election date, election uh, term from three years to four years. So many other aspects. Huh? Um, the financial and financial authority of the, of the local government bodies, uh, we, it's still for the Minister of Finance and, and local government bodies, monies are still released to local government bodies under special heading. Um, amount of heads that is needed, some of the heads, local government bodies uh, don't have the heads that they really want to do, heads that really fit in, 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 the, in the desires of the region. And all these matters, those are some of the matters that are of concern. I do want to stay too long, but, um, you know, as I say, there should be subcommittees 
there should be sub bodies. Uh, it should be um, from from this head. There should be subgroups going out there, meeting with small groups, meeting with clubs, meeting with British councils, meeting with different bodies, and engaging in an exercise of 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 uh, uh, of allowing them to understand what and know what is in the, con the Constitution and engage in rapport that could co uh, a proper document could come. And then also now, I, um, Mr. the last one I want to say, Mr. the President, the Chairman spoke about, um, no, not Chairman, Mr. Far Dr. Farrell, spoke about a number of things that was put together in all the different commissions are still on a shelf somewhere, ha has not been implemented. How comfortable one could feel that all more submissions making to this body, where is it going? Right? Um, and, and who is going to determine what is going to make it off the shelf? Those are some serious concerns that I wanted to share. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, thank you, Mr. Kozi. Could I just clarify something? You could just go back. To, I need to clarify. <clears throat> you is it that you are suggesting that local government should be made a part of the constitution, to be included in the constitution? Yes. Okay. And you mentioned about the government has nine independent senators. Is it that the government has 16 senators of its own? There are nine independent senators separate and apart from the government. Yes. So you, you want to have the process for selecting independent senators reviewed? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Rudder would like to raise uh, a couple issues. Thank you. Thank you, moderator. Um, just by way of explaining myself, I cut my teeth as a public servant in Rio Claro 59 years ago on the Rio Claro demonstration station. And it seems to me that my going away uh, swan song is going to be in Rio Claro again in this constitution reform exercise. But I'm happy to be here. Um, uh, Mr. Cozier raised, uh, you raised a, a couple of questions that I think are very all, all very interesting, but if you would uh, clarify. Uh, the issue of uh, ignorance about the Constitution is real and probably manifests itself in the fact that so not many people are out discussing the matter robustly. And therefore, you are suggesting, that I, I, if I understand correctly, that coming out of this exercise should be, or part of what we are doing, should be initiating some purposeful uh, education process related to the Constitution. Um, maybe you have some ideas of how this can be done and perhaps you might want to share it with us later. The question I, I, I would ask though is having regard to the fact that there are so many concerns about the Constitution that we currently are aware of and know, would you be uh, amenable to going ahead with changes on the basis of which we have certain knowledge and understanding now, while we await and at a later point in time deal with other changes that might arise as coming out of a a fuller education system. Just as a suggestion, yes. So, so in Trinidad and Tobago, right? Um, um, uh, I want to get it correct, please. Uh, uh, temporary, this, this we end up permanent, right? <laughs> so. You might do a job and you say, okay, we're just doing a, a, a temporary thing.
for, for expediency. Most of the time, that expediency, temporary jobs stay permanent, right? So, if I could say this, I'm not sure if I'll be saying the right thing, but um, we had many before that we did. And um, maybe the same process or the same, the same thought process will engage when we say, let's do some by the time, and then as we go, we keep fixing. Um, I'm not sure that the Constitution should be, we should be every five years, or you think going into the Constitution, I, I, I'm not sure. But um, not that I am against doing something, but I, 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 am, I, I am feeling that um, whatever we're doing, the importance of this must be done good. Because we have experience in the past that we have done probably five or six or how much, how many different ones already. And um, so many things still isn't working. Have we, um, or are we doing the same thing that we did over the past times that we, that we did it? Are we doing the same thing? Are we using the same processes? Or are we doing something different? You know what we said about being mad, right? Doing the same thing over and over. Right? So, if we are doing the same thing that we have done all the time over the years, then it, is, it isn't making sense. Um, and also, what I'm saying is that I am, I, I am not, to me, right, to me, I am not seeing enough emphasis is being, is being exercised to activate, to excite, and generate a deeper sense of interest and concern in the citizenry to, to get their voices heard in this whole exercise. Okay. Um, some comments from Ms. Jackie Sampson Miguel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Proceedings. Mr. Cozier, good evening. Yeah, Thank you for your comments. I'm, I'm particularly interested in your comments regarding local government. As you know, as all of us know, currently the Constitution designates three branches of state the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Local government is part of the executive branch. Are you suggesting a different model? Am I suggesting? A different model. Should local government remain as it is a part of the executive branch? First question. I'm not sure I understand your question, but um, what, I'm, what I'm seeing, right? We. We, we have moved, uh, we, we, uh, we are moving local government from where it was, right? And we, right now we're in the process of, the, of reform. Correct. Um, and, uh, some of the things that are, is, are there are uh, uh, ventilating, we are uh, sharing initiatives in as it relates to local government reform. I, I, I always felt that some of those things could have been established without reform, right? Okay. Um, the reform didn't have to come for some of the things that they're saying now to be implemented, right? Um, and some of the things that are there has not, uh, has not been uh, uh, addressed. And um, no, this is not bashing, eh? we're not bashing no government or anything. We just, we're dealing with real issues here, how we could fix the thing, right? And I am saying that we are embarking on a reform which is, 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 is um, the plan is to give more autonomy to the local government body, yeah. which every, I believe every local government representative will be happy about, yeah. especially uh, chairmen and mayors, right? Because you, you are bogged in and locked in with, uh, with administration who's still dictating, dictating the pace, uh, who still, in some cases, are serious hindrance to progress and, uh, uh, of, of, of things happening in your region. So, on that same note, I am saying that um, 
we, they, they have to do to go a little deeper into, in, into the whole process and still ensure that the body is able to function with authority because you, you are still finding yourself from what, from what is happening. We are still finding ourselves in this uh, 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 obstructionist situation where yeah. the local government authority is still not able to function with authority. So presently, you report to the Ministry of Local Government. Yeah. Uh, is that a satisfactory arrangement in your view? Well, if, we, if, this, if, this, if this local government authority is, is their own authority, we really don't need a Ministry of Local Government. Okay. okay. What you need is finance. Right? And, 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 and the, the, the ability to employ the competent people to ensure that the authority functions properly and effectively. May I have one, one last question? Yes. And how would you recommend local government report to the people? Um, because currently local government reports to the people through the Minister of Local Government in the Parliament. Yeah? Local government uh, reports. Reports to the people. Yes. Uh -huh. Through the Ministry of Local Government. So all reporting to the people on what is done in local government is done through the Minister of Local Government to the Parliament. So all questions about local government matters um, will go through that minister and responses will be given in Parliament. How do you propose that problem should be solved? Should you, do you believe that local government members should be represented in parliament somehow? How is that going to be um, resolved if local government is considered autonomous, independent of the government? Well, they will never be independent from the government okay. because the government is responsible for every organization and every institution. They will always okay. be under the government. Is one. Two, um, I don't believe that uh, all local government authority will be, ever be able to function on its own free from, uh, uh, free from government uh, disbursement and financial resources. Okay. Um, in Mayaro, the, re the region of Mayaro, if they allow us to um, have all the monies that come from Mayaro, well, we really wouldn't need any disbursement from the government because we have all these uh, uh, multinational and national companies operating in our region. Not all the regions are fortunate it's like us. So that you will, you will always have to be under the, 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 the government of the day. Right? Okay. So that's one. Two, uh, how to report mm -hmm. to the nation. Um, I'm not sure how that could go, so I don't want to just say something. Right? I, didn't, I didn't have a thought on that. So but, um, but in the whole, in the, in the whole uh, act or the whole uh, formation of the local government authority, there, there must be um, the all authority uh, is accountable to the nation, is accountable to the government. So some system of accountability and reporting must be installed. Thank you very much. Just on that point, Mr. Kozia, um, is it that you are envisaging that with the enhancement of the status of local government, with local government reform, you want an elevation to a constitutional status. Uh, I recognize the issues of reporting and accountability and so on, but is it that you are envisaging that now that the local government status is intended to be elevated, you want that elevation to constitutional status Yes. Uh, much like how the Tobago House of Assembly is included in the Constitution as part of the Constitution, right. you want to find some mechanism whereby the local government bodies in Trinidad will get some kind of elevation as well. Is that, so. is that where you're going with Quite your thinking? So. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So to just bring the microphone and, uh, yeah, just take the microphone alone.
Mr. Mohammed would like to um, yes, thank, th thank you very much. make a contribution. Um, one of the points that Mr. Cozier has made is that um, citizens do not know the Constitution. And um, you have any idea why why that is so? How do you, um, why do you why do you say something like that? Okay, so why why I would say that, right? Um, people, yes, over the over the years, there is no the, 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 constitu the constitution is not taught in school. Just raise your voice a little bit. The constitution is not taught in school in no real way. It might, one or two things might be shared, but to say as a, as a form of, of edifying the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, the constitution is not thought, is not taught, taught in primary school or secondary school, right? So you come from school, you will only be uh, interested or, or uh, engage in something of, of the constitution that, um, that interests you. You know, most of the citizens, I don't believe, spend any time going through all of the Constitution and all what is their rights and what is not their rights, right? And in this time now, the Constitution, as far as the, the normal layman is concerned, the Constitution not that no food on this table. The Constitution and put in a uh, 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 thing, they help them to eat. Uh, people... Right now, people are studying how to live. They want job, they want food, they have to mind their family, they're central in school. People are not embarking on those situations. So, studying the Constitution is of no priority to the normal man and woman in this country. That's how I see it. 60, 64 years ago, as a school teacher in Rio Claro, all the primary schools. We had one, one secondary school here that was called the Modsec School, as Gypsy would remember. Every single primary school had a subject called civics. And I am telling you, in those years, around 1961-62, you had the children in these schools who knew every single prime minister in the Commonwealth, in the Commonwealth. Yeah, you talk about 64 years ago. And right. when I was in primary school in Tableland, we had it on, uh, on the permanent blackboard, as we called it then, who were the nominated members to the Legislative Council in Trinidad. So, we have had we have had a suggestion at another we have had a, a suggestion at another similar meeting in point 14 to be exact someone suggesting that we should make copies of the constitution available to the man in the street and um, do you think that, that that alone is sufficient or we should reintroduce civics in all the schools do both. Both. And the next question I want to ask is, I am of the opinion, and I might be totally wrong, it appears as if local government, which is nearest to the man in the street, wherever in Trinidad in particular, not so much Tobago, in Trinidad, seems to be, uh, there seems to be a very wide gap. I don't want to use a big word as emasculated. The population seems to be emasculated from the, 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 their representatives, you know, they are representatives. They are, they, 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 are, they are so distant from their representatives. And my friend here, Jackie, raised the question, how do you see something, if I am correct, how do you see something like that being corrected at the local government level? So I wouldn't say that the, 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 the local government representative is distant from, uh, from the people. Um, 
Every local government representative is, is, are, are in office because they were elected I, I, by... I'm not hearing you, sorry. If you lift your voice, are you I, saying no. you, um, the people are not distant from the local government representatives? Yeah, I, well, yeah. Well, I, say, I don't think that uh, uh, the point you're saying that the people are distant from the local government representative. I'm saying that I don't think that the people are distant from the local government representative. Every local government representative that at, at, at in office was elected by 1,000, 2,000, 600, how many, 1,500 people to put them in office, right? But um, getting into office, um, that exercise, this exercise I'll we'll be speaking about here uh, is, is not a priority, right? And, um, and things like these should become uh, something that, that local, local government bodies engaged in because we are government, local government. So we are government. So uh, things that the government should be doing, we cannot um, absolve ourselves and we can't uh, say, you know, that is for that government and we also should be part of it. But then the whole thing about it is that uh, the, 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 the exercise is, has not um, been implemented for whatever reason, you know, um, that has not been a priority. But in identifying now, when I'm trying to identify all the shortcomings and all the things that we should apply and all the things that we should adapt, you know, uh, this, this may be one of the things that the local government should be getting involved with because the local government reps um, are involved with their with with, with, with the electors and the electorates. Well, one of one of the um, one of our um, understanding or methods methods of approach in these consultations that we are having is that we 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 are here to hear from the people, you know, not to to engage in in any argument, so to speak. Um, but for for the benefit of my colleagues on the committee and those who are present. I have been in contact with you, and I know that you have tried your best and you have raised this event with your counselors, all the men, whoever, and so on, and you have tried your best to, to um, advertise and encourage people to come here. And I know that counselors um, have another commitment. We didn't take that into consideration when we planned this date, this Monday forum that the opposition party normally would have. Uh, I think it's the first Monday in every month. And that really slipped us so that the councillors are not here. Uh, so we can understand that. We can understand that. And it is not a complaint. But I would have thought that as councillors on the ground, and if they are in touch with the people they represent. You know, they could have asked people, and people should have been sufficiently interested to respond to their request that in their absence, people, um, the people in their electoral districts should come out and hear what we are, um, you know, what we are talking about as a government appointed um, uh, so, committee. So, uh, yeah, I, I take your point, but, um, but you know, uh, being real, right? Being real, um, politics has a lot of biases in it, right? A lot of biases. Yes. Right? Um, you know, we, and, I, and I'm trying to be real, right? So, of course, of right? course. So, um, you know, they might feel, well, you know, this might be a PNM thing, in UNC time, it says a UNC thing, right? Um, and as a, as a real situation, um, uh, to me, I don't see this as UNC or PNM thing. I, the Constitution governs all UNC, PNM, and none of the above. And the, the final decision that will be implemented uh, 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 for Trinidad and Tobago is going to govern all. So it should be a, 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 a conversation or an engagement that all should be interested in, right? But um, I can say, 
I, I understand what Mr. Koze is saying, but based on who we are seeing here and what we are seeing, neither is here. So the thing about it is that, like I said earlier, people are just wary people, not, not, not UNC people or PNM people or whoever people. People are wary of these things being done without any result. I mean, no implementation whatsoever. How much time in, 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 in our lifetime? I'm 71 years old. So I am old enough to know a lot of things that happen in, in this place. And I have seen this on so many occasions. I mean, I myself am wary. I only come here out of, I mean, because I'm semi-intellectual person who want to know a little more about, you know, about, about what my constitution is all about. And I can't say I'm an expert on the constitution. If I want to do anything, I actually, as, even as a former government minister, I would go like any other exam I'm going to do and go and, you know, revisit it and look at it. How many ordinary persons, let's face it, how many ordinary persons, I don't care what their, their political suasion is, are going to come to, to, to sit down to listen to you talk about your constitution? Like he said a little earlier, a lot of these people are somewhere about the place trying to get something for the children to go to school tomorrow. You know? And like you said, the counselors who who, who, who elected, um, a, lo a lot of them now, their political shenanigans take them away from this. So they, they, they are not even here to, to, let's say, represent their district, even though the people from the district are not here. But you, th th this is something that we can't, I, I don't think that we can force this on anybody. And I want to say this, that I don't think that in any country in the world, and I've been to a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of them, I've also lived in quite a few of them, and I don't think that there's any country in the world where the common man know anything about the Constitution. And I want to say that, and I want to say it without fear of contradiction. The common man really don't care about, uh, not that he doesn't care, he doesn't really have time to, to immerse himself in, 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 into this kind of thing. He leaves this for the government who he, who he, 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 he elected to do and hope that they do the right thing. Fortunately, the government now like, like, like I guess governments before are doing the right thing, but somebody somewhere down the line, on the assembly line, they don't know how to put the part together. It is not that the parts are not there. I am sure that in all these constitutional things that we have had or, or, or con consultation over the years, like, like you said, we have, we have sufficient of everything to put together, but somebody has to have they, 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 they wear it all. Well, not they wear it all, because they do have the wear it all. Somebody has to have the, the nerve to, somebody has to have the wanting to, to do all of this and make sure that they put it together <coughs> and let the parts work. It's, we, 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 a constitution has a lot of moving parts. A constitution is not a stoic thing. England doesn't have a written constitution. As a matter of fact, we have an extract out of England, unwritten constitution, which they rewrite every single day. And we, st we are stuck with, 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 with whatever they have here and, and we can't find a way out of it. So the, 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 the fact is that we have to look for some kind of a, a, a way that fits us, us. The first thing that we have to do with our constitution is to make sure that it fits us. We, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, and we have a constitution now that doesn't fit us. It doesn't fit us at all. So somebody have to take all these parts that we have already and put it together because people are wary. They're wary. I don't think you, if you carry on this, 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 this consultation for, it's the 15th is going to be up, I think. If, if you carry it on for the next 50 months, you wouldn't get more, more people than this coming there because the people are just constitution, I mean, consultation wary. So let's just get the things that we have together and the little that we have to, we're going to get here. I would lend my little voice into it because I can make a song and tell them what to do, you know. And I will do that. I could do that and, 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 and help them along so that they would know exactly how, we, how urgent it is to put this thing together and get it going. How long every time we come, something go wrong, we, we, we have some consultation. Something go wrong, we put our next set of people. And, something, and, and this goes for everything. Trinidad and Tobago love consultation. And we love to put you know, the, the, these, these committees together. So let's try to see what, what, how, how we could get the moving parts going, man. I think, I, I, if I may say, I think we are getting into the marrow of the matter. 
with the contributions from both of you. And I think we are actually on the same wavelength. My, I don't know if I'm repeating myself. What do we do to generate that kind of interest? Because as an ambassador for freedom, you have been a lifetime, you have spent your entire lifetime as an ambassador for freedom. And that is what a constitution is all about, propagating and protecting the people's freedom. And if you were not a freedom fighter, we cannot interpret in your soul what, what energizes you to produce what you have produced over the years. So when you talk about the Constitution must reflect we and where we have come from and what we stand for. This is our mission at, at the head table here. And this is what we, we want to get to the marrow of the matter. And you all are now actually being so open. My question is, how do we handle our people? You have seen it as, you, as a performer, right? And you know that the people possess the energy. The energy is in this population. We have inherited it in spite of all that we know of the past. We have inherited it. How do we harness that energy is something that haunts, haunts a lot of us who understand what we are about in concerning this exercise. I think what all, 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 that, all, all that's missing, the missing part in this is the will to implement. What's missing in all of this that we are doing here is the will to implement. Because somewhere along the line, like I have been in, I mean, I have been involved in the, 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 the full spectrum of, 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 of Trinidad's life, whether it is politics or whether it is entertainment, whether it, whatever it is, whether it is writing, whatever it is, I am part of it. And the thing about it, I have seen what the problem is. The problem is not the will of the people to want what they want. The problem is the will of the people in charge to implement what the people want. And that is, was, and seem to be always the problem. If we can take, like I said before, all that we have done and collate it, just look at what it is, it's there. This is, this, I mean, what I'm, what I'm about to say, I, I, I'm not, I don't mean it in a negative way, but what we're doing here is not really necessary, you know. What we're doing here is really we should have been having a committee like, like yours, sitting in some place now, taking all the hue wooden things and the, all, the, all the other things that go before and dissect it, look at the things that the people said for 50 years, they've been saying the same thing, and put it together and make sure that we implement the, the, the things inside it. Because it's a regurgitation. You have generations saying the same thing. I was never wrong in the hue wooden time. But I'm sure that there are people who were in those consultations who are saying exactly what I am saying now. And I am sure that it is documented. I can tell you that it's documented. That much I know. So the fact remains is that this, a committee like yours, should be set up and given all these with all the intellectual people that we have here, given all the things, the writings that we have already, and please save the people from trying to, 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 to come up with, with, with new things you ever went to confession long time? Yeah. When you go confession long time, you're going by the priest this week, you never do nothing, you know, but your mother and them send you to confess. So you go on and start to say, a thief milk, a, a, a play marble, a pitch under the thing. You never do none of it. This is what is happening here. It's actually people looking for things to say. And, you know, and, and, but generations have been saying it. Let's implement it. What we are lacking, and I want that to be documented that I say that, what we are lacking is the will of implementation. That is what we are lacking. 
Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's get some. Yes, the gentleman here wants to. Hi, good night. Um, you you might this. just want to stand so we could see you because there's a camera here. That, uh, you, if you were in the front row, you could sit, but it's difficult to take you sitting behind other people. Hi, good night. My name is Brian Richards. Um, well, I came from Saparia side, reason being. Um, I'm taking into consideration that this project has a fast approaching deadline, and I didn't take the opportunity to go to point 14, which time-wise is a little closer. You want to just hold the mic a little closer oh. to you? Yeah. Um, so because I'm not sure when next time I get a close opportunity to attend before the 15th, I decided to attend. Um, I wanted to say, I agree, because I came in a little bit late, with everything that I've heard discussed so far tonight. But what I would like to put to the discussion at this time is that there are things that are missing from the conversation as it's been documented for two reasons. One, as a young person in Trinidad and Tobago, I know there's a very consistent verbalization of a commitment to include young people. But even, and I attend public forums as often as I can, um, even tonight, there are not that many persons probably under, let's say, 35 here. And to stretch the idea, 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, those young people are not thinking about what even something like this process, but a council meeting, a police community meeting, can potentially do for them if what they say is implemented, of course. Right? Additionally, I think these kind of activities attract a type of person, and I wouldn't get into it, but because it doesn't attract a lot of other people, a lot of other people won't attend. That doesn't mean that they don't have things to say or to contribute. It just means that for the same reasons as expressed, they have other priorities. They're just not going to take the time. All right? um, I have been following this advisory committee's activities because constitutional reform is something that um, interested in, I like to read about it, I like to look at it, um, organizational, organizational design, those kinds of things as well. So, following the committee and coming down to last week, not seeing even the kind of activity in terms of even public forums, um, I wanted to get my peers more involved, so I started using my very small social media network to promote at least the social media pages to talk about constitutional reform, to get more young people involved. Um, the response is not as exciting, but I say that to make the point. I want to task this committee as, from what I understand, part of its purpose is to outline the way that we will go into a further process of constitutional reform. Because I'm, I'm not sure about it. Persons who I show it to, they ask me about it as well. And so I'm kind of posing that question as well tonight. A lot of people aren't clear, especially because of the kinds of comments that you've seen in the media from persons who aren't on the committee, the prime minister included, etc. It's not really clear what the function, the full function, and the limit or the remit of this committee is. But at least the way in which it's communicated some of us are inclined to believe that something is supposed to happen after. You all are supposed to kind of tell us how and what and those kinds of things. So to clarify that. That, this conversation then, at the end of it, you all should be able to tell that committee how to go about engaging the various demographics in the country effectively. So I'm a young person. I see you all are doing promotions now with more popular persons. I saw the promotion with Blaze, for example. But you have a way to go, right? I mean, 
and I'm respecting the fact that you all are professionals, you all have other commitments, and you all are doing a service to the country, but more than setting up a plan to teach the Constitution, if you want to reach young people, you have to get them where they are. They're in school, they're in extracurricular, co-curricular events, you have to reach out to President's Award, find some way to get them even to get those young persons involved. It's a, if it's a right, if it's to host sessions. Um, no, and so it's the same thing. I say those things and I have to consider that that may be beyond your remit. But again, those are the kinds of things that we may have to consider necessary to effectively engage in our public, in our public consultation process on what we think needs to change in the nation. Um, so I'll hand over the mic now. Thank you all very much. Um, thank you for your um, comments, Mr. Richards. Before I take the next person, Chairman, I don't know if you want to just say a word on the remit of the committee, because he asked for clarity. Yes, our remit is simply to gather the views of the population at large. And um, when we get those views, we put it into what is called a terms of reference. We submit it to the government. The government will then call a national consultation. Now, the national consultation, as I've indicated before, cannot only be in Port of Spain. It has to be in the population centers, so San Fernando, um, Tobago, east, south. Um, so that basically is it. But we need the views of the people, exactly what we're getting here this evening, your views. Um, Chairman Kozia, give us quite a list. Gypsy also, we, we listen to you. So it's a gather the views and put it into terms of reference. Now, having done that, we have people who are contributing through emails and, and through the internet. We've had over 200 and something um, written submissions. We've put out a questionnaire, I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, right, the recommendations of here, the, the, the website. Um, we've had about 432 direct recommendations already through the internet. Um, so that is what we're hoping to, to achieve. We take all that and then put it into terms of reference. So having put the terms of reference, all that everybody's contributing here will also be on the internet, okay? We wouldn't, if three people say they want Gypsy and Mr. Cozy and you say, okay, we want fixed term. Well, we won't put fixed term elections three times. We know that that is a topic that needs to be discussed. So all that would be in a working document, apart from the terms of reference. And it is our view that that working document, once we submit it to the, the government, it's going to be available, hopefully, to the, the public. So the public can read what we have done. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this gentleman here wanted to make a contribution. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasant good afternoon, evening to everyone. My name is Junior Suknanan. I am a retired primary school teacher. I am here due to a concern of the Teaching Service Commission. I believe that the Teaching Service Commission acts as a rubber stamp under Section 90 of the Constitution. The fact that the Teaching Service Commission is insulated from grievous decisions taken by being a, I'm not sure if the terminology is correct, a quasi-judicial body, all right, allows the Teaching Service Commission in erring not to allow any member, or oh sorry, any redress by a member of the Teaching Service Commission against whom an injustice is done. And I'm speaking from a personal experience. Uh, it is even more alarming 
to think that our protective services, public service commissions and commissions are also insulated and their functions of hiring, promoting, transferring, discipline, etc. If it is flawed, no one is held culpable, all right, because of that insulation um, entrenched in uh, that body. I have heard that consultations took place. Well, I was uh, present in the last consultation and made a, a submission on a different matter. But um, as everybody else is, else here is concerned, nothing moves forward. I'm speaking about probably 2013 or so, 10 years plus. And um, I do hope that this consultation bears fruit. Um, and I would like to just refer to the last consultation, the last working document on January 9, 2009, which states, that's a working document, states that uh, on the clause 166, that the teaching service commission functions can be done by an educational human resource agency. That, that was just from, uh, a clause in the last rounds of consultation. Uh, this may be acceptable, yes, of course, uh, looking at the, 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 the functions of the Teaching Service Commission, in my opinion. But further, in Clause 168 of that same document, it, the Teaching Service Commission reappears for the purpose of appeals um, should the, the, the Educational Human Resource Agency err uh, in some way or the other. Uh, that's according to my understanding. Um, I am just here to, 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 to express my concern and, and, and uh, hope that a change takes place within the Teaching Service Commission and, all, and by extension all the service commissions. Because with that protection that they have, we are hearing here, as Mr. Farrell said, that uh, it is just not working. It is not working and I think that may go back to... to, to Possibly the fact that it has to be changed in parliament, you may need three-fifths or three-quarter majority. And many of the issues here that may be discussed may not reach that. And we have to face reality and know that since the year 2000, with the 1818 deadlock, um, and presently, if we minus the two Tobago seats, we have like a, 18, a 1920 situation. So it is extremely difficult to get that majority, and I believe that that is a hindrance for the Constitution moving forward or for even making recommendations. I don't know what the specialists, the panelists may, may, may suggest or consultations in June may bring forward, but um, it is imperative that we do something about it. Uh, the legal minds who sit there to, to, to guide us along, I do hope that something comes out of this consultation because I have had the experience um, of a disciplinary matter, and if it was not the, for the services of an articulate lawyer, um, I would have languished. I have been retired four years now, and I may not have had my situation, my, my position resolved because I could not do anything except get legal advice. I mean, the, 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 the Teaching Service Commission acted and things like that, whatever it is. Um, I would make submissions or, or by the deadline date on the 15th and for other matters too. But this is the most burning issue and I just want to raise that and uh, ask the chair, the, 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 the panel to see how well they can address that situation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, right, we have another. Uh, you can just pass the microphone. Hi, pleasant good afternoon. My name is Reba Bowen. I'm a resident of the Reba Bowen. Yeah, I'm a resident of the this Rio Claro district. And um, I want to begin by apologizing on behalf of my community because I was really dumbstruck when I saw the amount of empty chairs. But that doesn't take away from what has to be done, and I'm sure what will be done. Um, I've heard the 
contributions of Mr. Peters and Mr. Kose. Mine is different. In my lifetime, this is the first opportunity I am getting to add or listen to or to pay attention. But I want to also say for it to be palatable, I want to take a pin from the young man before. We have to find a way to make it attractive to the youth. God forbid that nothing happens coming out of this. How many of y'all would be here to say that y'all were part of what transpired at this one? We need the involvement of the youth. I believe the youths have a contribution to make as it pertains to the Constitution and what it should look like because if it is to go how we, we are saying it, we're going to go. They're going to be your age or my age by the time it, the work is done. Yeah? And we want to ensure that this time we make it different. We learn from the lessons that would have gone, why it wasn't implemented. Ye yes, the politicians are the ones to finally make it happen. But if we don't involve or we don't find the mechanism to attract the youth and, and the wider community, it might just well be the politicians would not pay attention. But the minute the rooms are becoming full and, and the youth are involved, I'm sure they would pay attention and they would find a way to make it happen because the institutions are failing us. The commissions that the gentleman spoke to before. I mean, when you hear what is before them and the length of time they're taking to make a decision, that's uncalled for. For instance, the judiciary. Some people go before the judiciary and, and, and the judges give them an immediate verbal Decision. Some have to wait months. Who dictates that? I think the, it should be somewhere in the Constitution that we could fix these things and not have to overhaul the entire thing to make it workable. So I want to rest by saying I look forward to the real deal when, 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 when you all submit what should be done and, and, and I, I hope that the youth is going to be featured in what you all propose so that we could get a wider cross-section of views in the final product of what you all propose as a new constitution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over here. Good night. Good night to the head table. Good night to the chairman. Good night, Mr. Peters. Good night, all present. My name is Ryan Stewart. I am the councillor for Mayaro. Came from the Mayaro district. Um, and having sat down listening to all the contributions, I think it's imperative that we understand and take this back to the schools. It is important, and you would have asked a question to Mr. Cozy if we should implement the schools and flyers. That's two methods in which we can get the message across. But it's important that we bridge the gap because there seems to be a disconnect between the young people and experience. And the experience is important for those that are coming behind. The only is how they will be able to soon lead. They need, time, they need to spend time with the experience and understand the document. The Constitution is a living document. It's not something that is going to, to stay because we're living in a changing world. The world is changing. The people are changing. The way we do stuff changes. COVID taught us that. You know, we don't need another major um, situation in the world to understand that the world is changing. We know that. We know it's constantly changing. I, if I stand corrected, this is the fifth or sixth consultation. 
how many times are we going to talk and talk and talk? And as Mr. Peter said, we need to grow and start implementing. We wouldn't get everything right at the first time, but that is part of the process. There's a lesson in failure too. So we may make mistakes, but that is where we will know what can work and what cannot work, as opposed to when we do these type of stuff, shelve it. We shelve too many stuff, and there are not enough continuity in when we come about with ideas and in terms of implementing. So that's my contribution for tonight. Um, I would like to see it back in the schools because for the ones that went to school and had the constitution back then, today, they can still, they can still explain because it's no knowledge is wasted knowledge. I learned that. So once we implement it in the schools and we get it going, that knowledge will then contribute and go back to our society, go back to our country, and we can move forward. So that is my contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other uh, contributions from the floor? You want to just stand up so the cameras can catch you? Yeah. Um, as I'm here, so that it's documented. I think it may be important in the Constitution to define the individual or person as well as a citizen. Um, I know under the current iteration it's there, um, but I think those two things in, a, in particular in a more explicit way. As, uh, additionally, I think there should be a clear definition for children, right, reflected in the Constitution. And so that as we go about then working around those three definitions in particular, the rights that we give to the citizen, we are cognizant about the definition that we have for a person or an individual so that as we build out our rights, we don't have, or at least similarly, I'm reflecting on current situations, international law, etc. as well. Um, we do not replace the old system that we have but a system that still leaves us wanting with legislation on immigration and all of these different things. I, that will also lend itself to a clear definition I, or what I believe should be reflected as a principal value of the Republican Constitution is the right of the individual to productive work. Um, I think, depending on how that is built out as well, the protection of the worker, wages as well, are very important to me. Um, it, I'm not sure in terms of the Constitution, but in a, reflecting the sentiments of the counselors, the educational programming, the way that the curriculum design is set up as a structure built into the ministry, etc., those are things that we, the public, should have an interest in, and especially because at present, the real world situation is dealing with issues and concepts that you kind of have to teach the children. I, I do think the way the system is set up takes into consideration that a child learns empathy. And so as you build out the development of the child around the public education system, etc., those things become important. So that the educational programming reflects the values of the country, the republic. Um, yeah, just those, thanks. Thank you, <clears throat> Chairman. So what I'm gathering here, to some extent, is that the Constitution has to be widely disseminated, and especially among the young people. So. Mr. Suknanan, being a teacher, would remember the book uh, by Mr. Wilfred D. Bess on civics. That was a book that was available in the primary schools. So that is what perhaps the Ministry of Education can look at. Putting back a book on civics and the simpler aspects of the Constitution could be in that book. Don't forget, children at the primary age are about 11, 12 maximum. But the Constitution can be a subject, a CXC subject in the schools. And that is where you have a 
good population, a big population of young people, the future leaders of the country, it's all in the secondary schools. So the constitution of Trinidad and Tobago, or indeed the Caribbean, we could be just part of that whole uh, su subject area. It could be taught in the schools as a CXE subject, so that you have to learn it to pass it. And you have to make up numbers in, in, in subject areas. So teach it in the schools. That's where you need to do it. You know, the writer in me always come out every time I hear something like what you just say there. That is the ideal idea, what you're saying there, to have the constitutional thought. But I want to tell you that in, if we're going ahead with the trend that we have in the schools today, then every Monday morning or every time school close and open back, we've got to change the constitution. Because right now in all our schools, the books that my little daughter used in the last semester in school. She can't use it when school go back and it have the same name, but they change two words inside it and tell you that you who come in and they now can't use it. So if it, if it indeed we have in the constitution in schools, I mean, I don't know how, we going, how that is going to work because they have to change something in it every day because it's a scheme. Really, the whole system in the school is a scheme to get people to buy books that they don't have the money to really buy. And I say this without fear of contradiction because if you talk to poor people out there, I buy books for them all the time. I do have a child going to school right now, but I buy more school books than, than you will imagine. And the same books, the same books that they just used, I mean, if we have any parent in here, the same books that they just used last September, when the next September come back. I remember when we were going to school, I used to use, I, I use my uncle books. I use my uncle books in my school because it was the same books that they gave us. To, but now they have the same book with the same name, but you have to go and buy a new one because it had three words somebody changed inside it and say, and say that's a new edition. So they have edition. So then we'll have plenty editions of the Constitution and that might work. I'm not quite sure, but I hope that to see the Constitution in schools, the way that it is written and not change it every Monday morning to buy our next constitution. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. I would just like to add to what Mr. Peters said and um, the chairperson, Mr. Sinanan, mentioned about the school system and uh, what, what, what obtains at this time. And we know that there is a problem, but uh, my suggestion uh, based on my opinion of you cannot straighten a bend tree, right? We have to take these children at primary school age. And I want to, to, to submit here um, for, 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 for recommendation, as a recommendation to uh, things like scouting, girl guides in the primary school, which leads up to cadets and so on in the secondary school, would have the children disciplined. Teaching the constitution in the primary school, it is already loaded. It's a curriculum. These children, with, 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 with everything else, it's, the, the, the school curriculum has to be revisited, whereby we educate the children in keeping in tandem with the movements of modern day technology and so on, and stop giving them this. I mean, as a standard five teacher, at some point in time, the, the, the anxiety, the stress, both on teachers and the students. It's, 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 it's not really... Um, to me, for the children at that age. And they go into secondary school and we find that they have a lot of burnout. When they reach standard uh, form two, form three, and, and, and uh, they cannot perform for some reason or the other, there's nothing in place, all right? As a past district commissioner from Mayaro Rio Claro, I can say that a lot of work had been done and um, it, it, it is voluntary, so it is difficult to get people to come out and, and volunteer their time to take these kids out and to, to have activities and to plan. It, it is a, a, a great, great um, task. And so if the, this forum can, can, can motivate the powers that be to introduce things like scouting in the school curriculum 
and, and again, I want to make it clear, I'm not speaking on behalf of the, of the Scout Association of Trinidad and Tobago, but as a past Scout Commissioner for Mayor Rio Claro, I am not authorized to speak on behalf of, Mr., um, of the Com National Scout Commissioner. So I just want to make that clear, but scouting to me is a true alternative. Many of us, well, I, I looking at the age here, who didn't grow up in scouting would have been privy to the, to, 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 to the training growing up then. We don't see young people here because they are not interested. They have other distractions, all right? Simple as we take children to camp and so on. You have to ask them to leave their phones at home. We could include the technology in the school, marry everything, use the school's curriculum to teach the children. Um, let's say like in scouting, you have um, the national flag, the, the meaning of the colors, the dimensions, so on. It is done in social studies in standard one. So there, is, there has to be some merger where we can disseminate this information to the children at a young age, keep them disciplined so that when they leave the secondary school system, they would already be in a mindset that they are going to respect the constitution as we heard before. Um, we, nobody is interested in, 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 in constitutional reform because we, probably fed up or, 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 or the way it is done, I don't know. So I'm just making this um, clarion call for social, for programs to lift the social welfare of the, the, the children the, in true scouting and so on. All right? Thank you, Mr. Gar. Thank you very much, Mr. Suknanan. Um, any other uh, proposals from the floor? Well, well, I'm not sensing that there's a groundswell of uh, views coming forward from the floor. Um, so I think at this point we may want to bring the proceedings to an end. But um, I want to thank uh, those of you who took the time to come here this evening and to engage members of the committee on either side of me uh, in discussion and in, in discourse. And I think that um, we may not have had a large turnout, but we had a very qualitative, uh, a high quality level discussion uh, on many of the issues that were raised. So on behalf of the committee, I would like to thank you all for coming here this evening. And uh, please note that um, all proposals made um, are being recorded by the Secretariat. And uh, let me wish you all a very good night and hope that you reach to your place of abode safely. Thank you for coming and good night.